So the presentation was about a summary of the story so far and um, how we've pretty much achieved the goals that we set out to achieve at the start of the year. Uh, it was a little bit uh, of a retelling of the story in terms of yesterday we had two presentations. One was from Alan. He talked about both the Daedalus wallet integration and some of the past. Charles talked about the future. So I was kind of left to uh, put a certain spin on the, on the story so far. Uh, so really it was uh, all about the some of the travel that we had to do to kind of create a team and create build relationships between all the people. I mean, it's a, a distributed team. Alan and Nico and some of those guys are in Argentina. There's three or four guys in, in Warsaw. Nobody knew each other. Uh, originally, we had to we were going to base this on the Scorex framework. So uh, I went to Russia and spoke to Alex. Um, so the presentation was really about how all that came together. Um, and finally about the current release, which is the Daedalus in release, going to happen hopefully in December. So that's taking our Daedalus wallet, the UI that was built for Cardano, and uh, putting it on top of our Mantis client, our ETC node. So you're able to use a familiar UI Daedalus with uh, Ethereum Classic. And then as I said, finally, again about the, uh, the future 2018, what's gonna come down the line. Uh, some of the ECIPs uh, that are going to happen would probably involve the, the zero knowledge snarks, that ECIP, something to do with treasury perhaps, and uh, some of the anonymous addresses, uh, so that's ECIP 1035. Uh, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic are branching apart, they have different monetary policies now, so the monetary policy for Ethereum Classic is summed up neatly by uh, 5M2, so every 5 million blocks there's a reduction of 20% in the reward and uh, that's different, that's in place now. I think the first reduction is going to happen in sometime in December. So they are growing apart. Uh, Ethereum has the Metropolis release which is broken into two different releases. The first is happening, the development's already done. Uh, Ethereum Classic is probably going to take some of the good uh, E EIPs and turn them into ECIPs and uh, implement them uh, but there's also uh, you know some differences will I'm sure or rather more differences will happen over the next year. Uh, first of all I just want to thank the hosts uh, I think we can agree they've set the bar very high for any uh, future events it's very nice to be here in Hong Kong to uh, talk about the Mantis client uh, so Mantis is the name that uh, IOHK has given to the uh, Ethereum Classic client that we're building. So my name is Alan McSherry and for the last uh, 11 months I've been leading the effort to uh, get this client together. Uh, actually before I was working on this I was working on uh, another uh, cryptocurrency code base in Scala. Uh, it was kind of a, a personal learning project, but it was used sort of Paxos-esque consensus, uh, but it was still uh, quite interesting. It had a UTXO database and, uh, and uh, it had an identity ledger. And uh, when I was doing that, I needed some cryptographic primitives. So, of course, the first rule of cryptography is not to invent your own, and I went looking for a, a library. And I found uh, Scripto, which was a library that was part of the Scorex framework. Uh, by Alex Chepernoy and uh, Dimitri. And so I needed something like, I think it was a shared secret, and I put a PR together and they, uh, they accepted it and I got talking to Alex. And then through Alex, uh, I met Charles. And uh, I guess the point is that uh, at that point, I, I knew a fair bit about, uh, about blockchain and uh, particularly Bitcoin, but not much about Ethereum. And so about a week after... Um, uh, I was hired, Charles rang me up and he said uh, I want you to build uh, an Ethereum classic client in Scala from the ground up and I said uh, Ethereum, that's uh, pretty complex and he said yes, yes it's very complex, it's actually one of the most complex that's out there but I'm giving you a team and I said oh great and they know Ethereum he said no, no, <laughs> they don't know anything about Ethereum uh, but they're good developers and I said okay uh, where are they? He said, uh, well, some of them are in Poland and, and some of them are in Argentina. And I said, okay, well, if we're going to have any chance of doing this, uh, you know, we're going to need to build a team and we're going to need to build relationships, you know, not just a bunch of people who work together, but try to get a bunch of people to trust each other. And has this turned off? Hello? Okay. 
So uh, we're going to have to try and form relationships and uh, go out and meet everybody and get everybody together. So um, Charles said, OK, go. So in January, I went out to uh, St. Petersburg, and I talked to Alex. And uh, we spent some days thinking about uh, maybe we could use the Scorex framework as the basis for this. Uh, but it turned out that that was really not suitable. There was far too much detailed design in Ethereum. The, the yellow paper specifies everything. And uh, the Scorex framework was probably just a little bit, even though it was quite abstract, wasn't a good fit. Uh, but by the end of um, January, I, uh, I had a plan and, uh, and some milestones uh, that we're going to execute too. Um, one of them, the first one was uh, we needed to connect to the network and we needed to decipher all of the, the messages that were coming in. And then we decided we'd do uh, transaction, sorry, then we decided we'd do blockchain synchronization and then transaction execution and then the uh, RPC API and finally uh, block creation. Uh, but even after we decided not to use Scorex, there was a question around uh, you know, whether we go with the JVM and Scala. And uh, we decided to, to stick with them. Um, as an engineer, I'm never going to denigrate innovation in new languages. I mean, this is, this is a good thing. Uh, but I think sometimes we forget, uh, a little bit of familiarity breeding contempt, that the JVM is a, is a real jewel. There's been uh, two decades of engineering has gone into this. There are countless languages that run on it. There's IDEs. There's monitoring tools. There's um, all kinds of libraries that you can use. So, I mean, for example, we use ACA. Uh, we use uh, the ACA actor model, which gives us our concurrency. We have um, ACA TCP in there, uh, which we also use. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's extremely useful. And then, and then there's Scala. So Scala is a hybrid language. It supports an object-oriented paradigm, and it also, supports, it also supports functional programming. And I think probably everybody here has heard about functional programming. It's an extremely hot topic at the moment. Uh, so just uh, an intuition as to why you know, we use functional programming and, and how it kind of compares, considering that both models are supported. So in the canonical example of, of object orientation, you might have uh, a bank account. And on that bank account, you would have an operation, which is to debit 10. So uh, when you call that operation, execute that operation, it very much depends on what the state of the bank account is at the time you call it. If there's more than 10 credits in the bank account, you'll get success. Otherwise, it's failure. Now, if you contrast that with a functional programming approach, and functional programming, it leans, it's, it's far closer to math. So in math, you'd have an operation, maybe add 2 plus 2. That's add with two parameters, 2 and 2. And when you do that, you expect to get the same result at all times. In fact, you're guaranteed to get the same result at all times. So it doesn't matter whether you call it in test or production, today, tomorrow, it's always exactly the same. And then when you combine those operations, so you have add 2 plus 2 and subtract 7, the exact same properties uh, are exhibited by the, by the composition of the, of the two functions together. Now, if you contrast that with what you try to do uh, an, op uh, an operation in an object-oriented environment where you have an operation that combines two objects. The combination of those two, those two objects results in a kind of a, in a, in a combination explosion of possibilities for the composed operation. And so I think you can see that uh, the, uh, the functional programming approach really um, helps with regards to, to testability, it helps with regards to assurance, um, and yeah, basically paves the way for uh, for some of the, um, the high assurance software that, that we try to write. In, uh, as I said, we had a plan by the end of January. Um, in February, uh, the team met up in a co-working space in Poland. And uh, we had a lot of strokey beard time trying to figure out the uh, Ethereum yellow paper. For anyone who's read it, I think the first time you read it, it sort of makes your eyes bleed a little bit. Uh, but we eventually got through it and, uh, and started to make some progress. And then, um, again, in March, the whole team met. So you can see uh, Alan from uh, yesterday's talk is there, and Nico looking wistfully at the camera. Uh, we all got together in, uh, in Athens for a few days and, and, uh, and, and you know, basically increased our understanding and, and, and made some progress on our milestones. And then finally, I went down to uh, Argentina to visit Alan and, and Nico and uh, 
we were uh, we continue to work. Basically, we, we we've hit most of our our milestones as we've gone by, and I, I think it's no coincidence that uh, the countries featured here are Argentina, Greece, and and Ireland, uh, three countries that have been, you know, affected by the financial crisis. And it sort of reminds me of why a lot of people uh, become involved in this area is to try and create a fairer global financial system. And you can kind of see that in, in uh, I mean, we get we got reminders of that in Greece when we're looking at, at places that you see on TV and some of the bricks that they pulled off the wall and broke up and used to uh, to throw at police. And uh, similarly in Argentina, you see some of the crowd control barriers are just sort of pushed to the side, not really put away, just pushed to the side for the time being. Uh, so that's that's a good reminder. Okay, this is the uh, this is uh, Team Growth and Deek. Team Growth and Deek run uh, works on uh, the Mantis client, and the first thing I have to say is uh, apologies to Conrad. You're still on the team. It's just an accident of the slide, so please don't panic. And uh, yeah, so we hit our deadlines uh, on the eighth of August. We released our beta, um, and since then we've been working on a few things that we found in the beta. So, for example, the LevelDB database is a port of the C++ database to Java. Um, we found a few issues in that, which we had to fix, so we've had to fork that. We discovered a problem with our pruning, and so we've, we've, had, to fix, uh, we've had to fix that. Um, but the main theme, I guess, of this release has been the integration with the Daedalus wallet. So hopefully you saw uh, Alan's presentation yesterday. Uh, where we, where we're, uh, uh, as I say, trying to trying to produce a single um, downloadable binary install, which will include the uh, the wallet. And um, on top of, uh, I, I guess, all that, this is some of the things that uh, are also going to be included in the Daedalus release. So apart from um, the wallet UI integration and, and stabilization, Ethereum has an enormous amount of um, tests. Uh, so their test suite. Uh, we've integrated with all of the ones that we found relevant. There's an enormous amount of them, but we've integrated with the the blockchain uh, tests and also, I think, most of the EVM tests at this stage. So uh, that's something that we've been we're quite pleased with. They're all uh, they're all done now. Uh, I can also report that uh, we're getting a professional security code audit done um, over the next couple of weeks. So. Uh, I don't think the contract has been signed yet, so I'm not going to name any names, but the, uh, uh, the company has done work in this area on other uh, cryptocurrency code bases, and uh, the lead auditor has some uh, really good credentials, so when we get that done, we'll, um, we'll publish the report. Okay, and the, uh, the ECPIP 1017, just a, a note of interest, uh, when we were doing this, we discovered that there was a, uh, we had a, a different interpretation of some of the text that was in there. So some of the people were, were, were creating the block armor's reward uh, by doing the rounding up front, and there was another inter interpretation that suggests that the, the rounding should be done later. Um, and so we've had to put together a, a PR just to get that clarified. Now, the actual uh, rounding error will only occur in about 40 years, uh, so it's, it's not really a big problem. But in, in 40 years' time, when nothing happens, that's because we fixed it. Um, so we'll be pleased about that. But uh, the point really is that there's a level of detail required in looking at this because it's value that's involved, um, that you really have to go to, to the nth degree to, to test these things and uh, to look after the integration properly. That's our, uh, that's our Daedalus wallet. OK, so uh, that's really uh, the Daedalus release, which we expect to happen, I think, in, uh, in, in December, really. That's, that's looking good. Beyond that, we should have a 1.0 release in January, early next year. Um, and the 1.0 release will basically be any of the problems that we find uh, from the RC1 release. Uh, but Beyond that then, that's, that's, as I say, is going to be January of next year. Beyond that then, we're looking at uh, 2018. So we will be supporting the client for the duration of 2018. Uh, some of the interesting ECIPs that are coming up, the 1025 with the zero knowledge SNARK verification, um, and also 1035, Cody's uh, paper on, on stealth addresses, they look, they look interesting. 
Of course, this all depends on these things getting ratified. Um, then ICP support, IPC support, we know that we need that because currently we have support for HTTP. That's how we expose our JSON or PC APIs, but we know we're going to have to use uh, sockets in the future. And then um, the Sputnik VM integration. Uh, I think this Sputnik VM looks, uh, looks like it might be a, a, a key piece of software uh, next year. So we would certainly look at uh, allowing um, integration. I mean, we, have, we, have, uh, we obviously have our own EVM, um, uh, but we will look at uh, possibly integrating with that. And uh, I mean, Charles spoke yesterday about uh, the, the work that we're doing in terms of pulling apart the EVM uh, and modeling it with the, uh, with the K framework and some of the exciting possibilities that are there. And he also spoke uh, about the possibility of uh, treasury. And the formal verification of, of, of the EVM uh, is also something that's going to, I think, land sometime in, in 2018. And as well as those, uh, in, in our Scala code base, we're looking at uh, some of the, there are some formal verification tools that we can use to, um, to verify some smaller parts of the, of the Scala code base, maybe some of the more important ones. Uh, so that's going to happen uh, also. And then finally, uh, the Daedalus wallet itself uh, has a framework uh, type approach where they've done a lot of work trying to make plugins extremely uh, easy to use. So we'd expect that to become a multi-currency uh, wallet in the future. But not only that, uh, the Daedalus wallet itself will start to provide a lot of support for, for development. Uh, so for development of um, I mean, first step will be just to deploy uh, contracts uh, through the wallet. Um, and so that is also on the, uh, on the card in 2018. Okay, so uh, that's a summary of uh, the story so far and uh, a little overview of the possibilities for uh, 2018. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, we have what to say, about five people on the team currently, and uh, uh, there's no plans to um, to reduce that number. Um, so we're staffed up uh, and, and able to execute on uh, on any of the uh, ECIPs that come through, um, and also some of the other uh, the other things that are in the pipeline. So yeah, I don't foresee any issues in terms of uh, in terms of um, pull requests from the community to, I mean, the, the code base Mantis is completely open source. So anyone is free to put together a pull request and we'll, you know, we'll be able to, to, to look at that and see where it goes. So yeah, we'd, we would encourage uh, anyone who has something to contribute. Uh, we'd be delighted to, to review the PR and, and get it in there. Okay, thank you.